it was a beautiful day for a wedding. In the town of Cana, the bride, the groom, and the friends and family were getting ready. They were busy with beautiful clothes and special food and music and gorgeous flowers. Many people were invited to gather to celebrate the beginning of a new family. Jesus was one of the guests invited to the wedding in Cana. And his mother, Mary, was going to help with the wedding. She was a, a relative or a friend. And Jesus' disciples were invited to come along too. So Jesus, Mary, and his disciples must have joined in the wedding joy. Now in those days, all the guests would walk along with the groom as he took his bride to their new home. And as they walked, they would play instruments. And also as they were walking, they would have branches from trees and they would wave them back and forth as they were celebrating this special time. Then at the groom's home, they would get ready for a big meal. And it would maybe last for a whole week. And as each guest came in, the servants waited with bowls and towels. It was a polite thing for Jewish families to offer to wash the guests' feet after they walked on the dirty, dusty roads. Well, Mary must have helped to organize things and then to make sure people tell them what to do and where to go. She was a big help. But then, then, there was a, can you do this with me? Big problem. They were running out of wine. Maybe there were more guests who came than expected. And it would be so embarrassing if they'd run out of wine that they wanted to serve them. Now the people that day are at the wedding probably weren't thinking about it, but they had even a bigger problem. It's called sin. And you and I have sin. The Bible says, and you will be trapped with the cords of sin. Sin is anything you think and you go like this. Sin is anything you say, go like this. And sin is anything you do, go like this. That is not right in God's sight. Yes, the people there that day at the wedding probably weren't thinking about sin because they were thinking about running out of wine. So Mary must have wondered, hmm, let's all do that together. Hmm, how could she help with this problem? And then she thought of Jesus. He was her son, of course, but she knew that he was much more than that. Mary knew that Jesus was the Son of God. And she wanted everyone else to know it too. Thinking of this, Mary right away found Jesus. And she said, they have no wine. Can you say that with me? They have no wine. She knew that he could do something about the problem. And I'm sure she wanted him to do something amazing in front of everyone. Well, Jesus knew that this was what his mother was thinking. Can we go like this? And Jesus said, well, what do I have to do with you? My time has not yet come. He meant that this problem really doesn't have anything to do with me right it's not the right time for me to do what you want me to do. Because Jesus understood that he hadn't come to earth just to prove who he was. He had come to give life so all people could have their sins forgiven. 
And the Bible says that Jesus, can we point up like this? Jesus took our sins, point to yourself, in his own body, point up, on the cross. Jesus understood that this was the reason that he had come into the world. Well, Mary didn't really understand all this. She heard Jesus' answer, but she didn't change her mind. She went right to the servants and she said to them, do what Jesus tells you to do. Well, about that time, Jesus must have looked and noticed that nearby were six. Let's count the six. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six big water pots made of stone. They were probably the jars that had held the water used to wash the guests' feet. And each one of those could hold from about 18 to 27 gallons of water. And now they were empty. Well, Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. Well, the servants, they didn't understand. How could this help? They needed wine, not water. But they remembered, as point like this, what Mary had said. And they did exactly what Jesus told them to do. And they filled those six huge pots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Exactly how Jesus told them to do with the water. Right up to the very top of the jars. And then Jesus said, dip some out now and take it to the governor. Now, the governor was the man who was in charge of making sure that the meal was just right. He would taste the wine first to make sure it was good enough to give to all the guests. He would not be happy if the servants gave him water instead of wine. But the servants did what Jesus said, and they filled a container, carried it to the man, and gave it to him. The servants trusted that Jesus' way was the best way. If you've already believed in Jesus, remember, Jesus' way is the best way. Pray for people who may be even mean to you. Or do kind things to someone, even if you don't get a prize or a reward. The servants we're doing it Jesus' way. And as soon as the governor had tasted the wine, let's all go like this. He smiled. He must have had this great big smile. And he called over to the groom to come over to him. Was the governor going to be angry and, and complain that the servants had given him just plain old water? He didn't know where the drink had come from. Only the servants knew. Well, when the groom came over, the governor must have really, really smiled. Let's have a big smile again. He smiled with me again. Ready? Oh, he was so happy. Because usually the people put out their best wine at the beginning of the wedding and then put out the other wine at the end. Of the wedding. That wine maybe wasn't quite as good. But you know what the governor said? You have saved the good wine until now, he said. Shocked, maybe the servants, they looked down uh, at their container uh, in their hands and they, and, th th and they looked at the liquid and maybe they, they, they smell a little bit, see what this isn't water. Jesus had made the water turn into wine. And it was the best wine that the governor had ever tasted. 
Jesus had done a miracle. Now, as king over all the world, Jesus made something happen that usually didn't happen, of course. This was Jesus' first, let's go like this, miracle as a man here on earth. No one but Mary, the servants, and the disciples knew. So now the disciples believed in Jesus even more. And they knew he was someone very special. And what about you? Have you believed on Jesus? Now, not just that he can do miracles, but that he is the only one who can save you. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. How is someone saved and be able to go to heaven someday when your time on earth here is over? You need to believe that you've sinned and done wrong things. And you need to believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And believe that Jesus and what Jesus did for you to be able to go to heaven someday when your time on earth here is over. If you haven't believed in Jesus as your Savior from your sins, would you believe in him right now? But you say, I already have believed. Well, then I, I hope you remember what this says. Can we all say it together? Let's all say it together. Ready? Go. Jesus' way is the best way. Pray for someone even though they're doing mean things to you. Or do kind things for someone even though you might not get a prize or reward. Will you do that? I hope and I pray you will. Well, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful story of Jesus. And I pray for anyone watching right now that they would believe in you. If they haven't believed in you, if they've never believed in you, I pray that they believe in you right now. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, that was a wonderful story of Jesus. I'm looking forward to hearing the next story of Jesus. And I'm looking forward to seeing you soon.